Alright, so today I didn't have much to do, so I decided to record this. I'm gonna explain how to speedrun double edged. So, the first of all is very easy. Well, I'm gonna explain the mechanics and concept first. So, double edge, you control this guy, this character. You're faced with a bunch of different enemy types. There are also different weapons, but I'll get into that once we actually encounter them. So this is the first enemy. And they die in two sword hits. They're very weak. They usually don't have swords. Some of them do, but most of them have just daggers like this. So you can outrage them and kill them fast easily. And I'm going to be referring to them as grunts for the rest of this run. So after this, a couple more grunts. Just take them out fast. One of them has a sword. Don't get comboed and you're fine. So it's here that we counter the first projectile of this run, which is the chest. And projectiles are basically objects you can pick up and throw at enemies. They can hit multiple enemies at once if their position is about synced. And they deal more damage than swords, most importantly. Against the grunts, it's not actually that impactful to throw projectiles, but against strong enemies, it definitely starts showing. Which we'll get into later still. Also, speaking of chests, I don't generally recommend picking up coins unless they're in their way, because you don't want to take a detour and lose time. So here, the NPC tells you, hey, use your special attack. But I don't use it in the first level, and I'll get into why a bit later. So here we meet this guy. And this guy is a bit stronger than Grunts. He has twice the health, and they, they usually spawn with swords. So the thing is, if you hit him quickly, he gets knocked down. But if you delay your hits a little bit, if you space out your hits, you can ki actually kill him faster because he doesn't get knocked down. And this is a tactic you can use with other enemies as well, not just this guy. Okay, so this is the catch me if you can guy. This, I think he's a, supposed to be Fawn or Sada, uh, or Seder. Well, anyway, uh, the way he spawns here, he spawns and then sometimes if you keep moving, he straight up goes off screen. If he doesn't, he loses about ten to fifteen seconds, but. Uh, sometimes it just goes off screen like that. I don't think there's a consistent method for it. I just keep moving forward and hope he goes off screen. Here we need the first animals, which are boars, I think they're boars, and <laughs> um, chickens, which we'll see a bit later. Now, boars, once they get knocked down, you can use them as projectiles, just like chests, except they're not single use. But you have to hurry them to pick them back up every time, so it's not the greatest. And chickens are just, if you kill them, you can pick them up as a funny weapon. And I'm pretty sure it's weaker than the sword, it's like dagger strength, so <laughs> avoid picking up chickens. And then when we meet these, this guy, I'm gonna call them muscly dudes. So the problem with muscly dudes, what makes them hard is that they have a substantially larger amount of health compared to all the other enemies we've seen, which is two, <laughs> actually. and. They also have pretty strong attacks that are guaranteed to knock you down. So the main thing is that you shouldn't get too close to them, always take them out in priority. And unless you have good spacing, you should avoid using your special attack against these dudes, because they can quickly grab you and throw you down and they have a lot of range compared to your other enemies. And at the end of every non-boss level, at the end of every dash 1 and dash 3 stage, there's a few satyrs that show up and they just lose the time and there's nothing you can do about it. So we're moving on to stage 1-2. And the first thing you see is this guy carrying a new weapon, which is the axe. And the thing about the axe is it's not as fast to attack as the sword. The main advantage of the sword is that it's really fast and has decent range, so you can easily control large groups, large groups of enemies. The axe, you can't do that, but it still has area attacks, and you can. Uh, it's stronger than a sword, so you can use it to one-shot grunts, and 
yeah that's cool and this is why we're going to start talking about the special attack more because special attack which is used by pressing both attack and jump is uh, the strength of the special attack depends on what weapon you're holding so uh, if you hit a grunt once with a sword they don't die so if you special attack a grunt once with a sword they won't die either they'll just lose half their health but if you special attack grunts with an axe uh, here we didn't see it because the thing I got hit at the same time but if you special attack grunts with an axe you one shot them so this is why I'm gonna start using the special attack a lot more in the later levels but also something to note is that the special attack has a cooldown so you can't just spam it all the time <laughs> I also forgot to mention but since the special attack by default is going to knock down everyone they automatically lose their weapons so yeah that's great and we see our first gold statue here so quickly here uh, now I pick up the chest and you see I'll throw it in an advance before the enemy comes off screen this is because this enemy usually has uh, some lines of dialogue but if you kill an enemy before they start speaking it just skips their dialogue and you save like a few seconds And now we're soon approaching the boss fight. So special attack take out these dudes and then the boss comes out. You can see him right here, this golden dude. And there's a few enemies that come on screen to the left. And they're, they're just annoying, you gotta take them out quickly <laughs> so don't get in your hair. And the unique thing about Midas, this boss, is that you can't hurt him with normal weapons. You can only use projectiles. Now the game tells you to t use gold statues. I haven't tested it but I assume boars work too. And that's the first boss done. Moving on to the third stage we see a new projectile here which is the rock. And the rock is basically a chest but it's not single use. It's, you can just pick it up however many times you want. And also all projectiles deal the same amount of damage. I don't know if I specified that. I think it's the same damage as the axe. This level is pretty easy, unfortunately. Here we see a spike pit. And spike pits, uh, if you walk on them, they knock you down, dealing a bit of damage, and you also drop your weapon as per usual. But uh, you can easily either go around them or jump over them, so they're not that big of a threat. Th this is like the only time in the game where jump is actually useful outside of the special attack. <laughs> It's just to get over obstacles, really. When you got enemies that are like behind you or above you and you don't really know what to do, you, you can't hit them directly. A good thing is using your special attack, if you can one-shot them, that is. Because the special attack has more range than your regular attack and it also hits in multiple directions. The TLDR is just really abuse the special attack whenever you can use it to one-shot people. <laughs> because it's just faster that way. Here we can see tigers, and there's actually several reasons I don't take the tiger. One, it's not actually that much faster. Two, you can't use special attacks while you're on tigers, and you just can't use any weapons or projectiles. Three, you, can, you can't control your range, you can't control spacing quite as well as you can while you're on foot. And this means you're more vulnerable to getting hit. A single hit knocks you off the tiger. And getting knocked off the tiger means an enemy is going to take it, and that's a big time loss. So, taking tigers, for me, almost always results in a net time loss, which is why I sk always skip them. And against these guys, you have to get a good special attack, ideally. Yeah, like, that's pretty good. Ideally, you want to hit the musty dude and not get knocked down like I did here, obviously, but, you know. Oh yeah, S I suppose I should say this now. Sometimes, I don't know what causes it exactly, but sometimes when you do the special attack, some of your enemies will get hit multiple times. Like, they, they, it's like taking two hits when you get hit by your special attack. I don't know why, I think it's because it has a lingering hitbox or something, but anyways. Just appreciate that for now. <laughs> so 
So with this group of sailors, we gotta be careful that there's not rocks in their way, because sometimes they like to get stuck on the rocks. So, like this, you know, you, so you should throw them away to make sure they can leave the level. <laughs> and that's 1-3, 1-3, done. So now we get to 1-4, which is the last stage in the first act. And it's also kind of easy, but you don't get any extra weapons aside from the sword, so you can't really use the special attack as effectively here. So, which is why I don't use it. But you get a lot of projectiles, and you can just spam them whatever, which is great. <laughs> Alright, so you'll see this mostly dude here. When he gets knocked down, uh, there's a set cooldown until he gets back up. So you can actually throw projectiles early before he actually gets back up. And they'll hit him just as he's like raising from his knockdown. So you can actually kill him faster this way. This is a tactic you can use against other enemies as well, but this is the main example in this run. I said one time that throwing projectiles at grunts is a time loss. It's not actually time loss, but it's like a tiny bit slower because you have to slow down to pick up projectiles. And you can kill them in two sorts of things anyway. So now we get to the boss, which I believe is called Talos. And it's another pretty unique boss. So he's got his feet here, and you get a chip at his heels to kill him. Now ideally you would want both his, of his feet, of his heels to go down at the same time. And when this texture appears, this damage when you have to make sure you don't completely break it, you can weaken it like this, but we want to try to make it so both feet die at the same time, like this. And that was a good Talos fight. Or just a good Colossus fight if you want to call it that. That's the end of Act 1. Now we get to Act 2, which is set in, I believe, Ancient Greece. There's some tigers, and again, I don't take them, because it's slower. <laughs> so here we meet a new enemy, which is lizard men. Now, lizard men are very dangerous compared to other enemies we've seen so far. For two reasons. They're fast, well, three reasons actually. They have tridents, they, they attack fast, they move fast, and they have a melee attack that has good range. So as much as possible you want to take large groups of them out with special attacks and projectiles because you don't want to get knocked down by tridents which can be, happen very easily. And of course you take the trident as soon as you can, because it's a strong weapon. I don't know if it deals more damage than the axe, I think it deals about as much damage as the axe. But it's, you know, it's a good weapon, and why not take it? It's better than the axe for sure. So, you can get knocked down very very easily by Mr. Men when they have their tridents. So you want to make them lose their tridents as fast as possible. Which is easier said than done when there's like five of them harassing you. So 2-1, it might not look like it at first, but it's one of the harder stages of this run, because there's just so many lizard men. And getting knocked down can easily lose you a lot of time, if it happens multiple times in this level. But once you get the hang of it, it's not actually that hard. You know, you just gotta learn to time your special attack right. Now we move on to 2 2, which is a mini boss stage. At the start, there's a decently large group of lizard men, so even though I have a sword, I still use the special attack because I want to relieve them of their tridents to take them out faster. Alright, so this is the hammer, and the hammer is a very, very good weapon. Well, first off, it has broken range, and it can one-shot lizard men. 
deals a lot of damage, a lot of knockback, and has good range. It has basically everything you'd want in a melee weapon, except attack speed. And also, you can also use your special attack with it to one-shot everything, but in general it's better to just slam it on the ground regularly, because it's not actually any slower. And you want to try to attack early, because otherwise you can get knocked down by a lizard man like this. And when you have the hammer, avoid picking up projectiles, because when shutting things with the hammer just makes them die faster. And now we're approaching the mini boss, which is the Minotaur. And now to get a minute, good Minotaur fight, you have to stay in the center of the stage and move up at the last minute every time. So you get to the pillar, you move up, hidden, repeat. And this is the key to getting a good Minotaur fight. And just let him slam his head in the pillars. So here he was too far away because, I don't know, he just went too far to the right and so he stopped before he get running into the pillar. Sometimes it happens and there's not much you can do about it. And there he goes. So this is Act 2, halfway done. Now we get to 2-3, which is one of the easiest stages in the game, and you'll soon see why. This guy has a bow, and the bow is a very, very good weapon. It's even better than a hammer, in my opinion. You can two-shot lizard men, you can shoot at a distance, and you can easily take out enemy groups by just spamming arrows like this. So don't take the hammer, take the bow, because the bow is going to take out enemies faster. And honestly there's not much to say about this level, you just kinda spam arrows <laughs> and kill everything. Now stage 2-4. We meet a few new enemies and a new boss. Now this is the priest, and the priest has two main things he can do. The first one is turn you into this. Normally you jump over the circle to avoid to prevent this from happening, but this time I just failed. <laughs> and the second thing the priest can do is teleport. Now the, di the direction in which he teleports is random, but it's always about by the same distance every time, so it's not that hard to predict. And so when there's a priest, you always want to take them out in priority, because they take a lo quite a long time to kill, because they teleport all the time. Now there's a bow and a hammer here. D do not take the bow. The bow is bait. Take the hammer. This is because of the boss. Normally you take the bow, but just because of the boss here, you're gonna take the hammer. The rest of the level isn't... No, there isn't much to talk about again, because it's just spamming hammer. There's the last few grunts, down three chests, and then we meet this suspiciously small figure, Hercules. Now the reason I took the hammer here is because the hammer can knock him down in one hit. And similarly to Musty Dudes, this guy has attacks that can knock you down easily and lose you a lot of time. So you want to be as safe as possible during this fight, which is why I opted for the hammer and not the bow. Because you can knock him down with a bow, but it's, so, it's a lot harder and you pretty much have to use a special attack every time, which isn't ideal. Because Hercules has more range than you'd think. And uh, now, every time Hercules takes a set amount of damage, those mostly dudes will spawn. And this happens twice over the course of the boss fight. But again, they're easily disposed of by just hitting them with a hammer once, <laughs> you know? And. Just like that, Act 2 has been defeated. We move on to Act 3, which takes place in this kind of wasteland. 
Now, here we have the line hammer, which is exclusive to stage 3-1. It's basically a regular hammer. I don't think there's any differences between it and the regular hammer, other than the sound it makes and its texture. Texture. Okay, here we meet the new enemy, skeletons. And the main thing about skeletons is that they have a lot of health, they usually appear in big groups, and they carry swords. They're very dangerous when they have swords, but they're not too dangerous when they have no weapon. So, the main thing you have to keep in mind is... Uh, well, actually, for I'll get into that a bit later, because for stage 3-1 it's just spamming hammer over and over again. <laughs> You can two-shot them. The fact that you don't one-shot them just shows how strong they are compared to regular enemies. Again, not much to say because you're just spamming hammer over and over. So 3-1 isn't actually hard, but it's kind of a long stage, so it takes quite a bit of time to finish. So now we get to 3-2. So, Tirashu has a boss, and you also don't get any weapon aside from the sword, which makes it a lot harder to control skeletons. So, again, you remember how you take out these slightly stronger dudes by avoiding them from getting knocked down? You know, avoiding knocking them down? You can do the same thing with skeletons, because it's faster when you don't knock them down. But when there's big groups of skeletons, like more than five, J just spam, because it's easier, it's safer to just knock down everyone, so it's easier to deal with them. And here we see a priest. Now the priest can revive skeletons if you leave them alone. You'll notice that when a priest is on the field, they take uh, quite a bit longer to despawn. And their corpses just stay around for a lot longer, and this is because the priest is there, because you can revive them if you leave them alone for too long. So always take out the priest first as usual. And projectiles are great against skeletons as you'd expect, because you know. And special attack is good when you want to relieve them of their weapons, just because they are they have a lot of attack speed and it's hard to deal with them when they have a sword, <laughs> so yeah. Now we see these spike things. They're basically spike traps, but they they have like different hitboxes. They they like alternate and thing. I don't know. It's just spike traps, but easier to avoid, <laughs> basically. Now we start seeing stone statues here, and there's a reason for that. Remember gold statues in stage 1-2? Well, this is more or less the same thing. And we see a twin shot reference, twin shot cameo right here. Which is nice. So when you start seeing grunts, it means you're closer to the boss, Medusa. And now... Medusa, you should always try to kill her in priority, like over the grunts. <laughs> and Medusa has three main attacks. The first one is the bow. The second one is turning people to stone, which we'll see in a bit. Yeah, right, this, this. So anyone who's facing Medusa when this happens will get turned to stone, including you. And the third attack is a tail attack. So. What I'm doing here is, instead of throwing statues at her, which makes her get knocked down for quite a bit of time, and if you'll notice, Medusa and other some other bosses like Hercules also does this, when you knock them down, they stay down longer than usual enemies do. And because of this, it's faster to just spam the sword. Well, not spam, but just time it so she doesn't get knocked down and keep hitting her with a sword instead of just throwing projectiles. This was a really good Medusa fight, it's, it's actually harder to replicate than it looks. But that's 3-2 done, and we can move on to 3-3, which is not a very hard stage, <laughs> and we'll see why a bit soon. Now this is probably the hardest encounter of the stage, because there's a bunch of skeletons and there's two priests. 
So you could use a special attack wisely and stuff, but you know. So here we see the priest revive some skeletons because I didn't knock him down fast enough. Good job, me. So here there's a bunch of dudes with a bunch of different weapons. And you're gonna want to take the bow. Because as I said, the bow is a better weapon than the hammer. Except against Hercules. <laughs> So for the rest of the level, there's not much to say, you just spam arrows and take out everything lightning fast. And that is the second to last level cleared. So now we move on to the last level, which is probably the hardest one in the run. Because there's a lot of enemy groups. And this is pretty much the biggest enemy group. <laughs> there's just a huge amount of skeletons, it's hard to take them out effectively. This run did it pretty well, but it's not consistent. <laughs> well, I'm not consistent with it, just because there's so many skeletons and you can get comboed easily. And you also don't get any weapons aside from the sword, which makes it that much harder. Yeah, careful with those big rocks, because you can get knocked down easily. <laughs> And they deal quite a bit of damage. So, yeah. Push out. <laughs> Heads up. I didn't get to show it off in the rest of the run, but sometimes when you kill enemies or most of the time open chests and you have very low health, food will spawn and you can eat food to regain your health. So <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. And this guy, you always want to take him out with rocks because it's faster than just spamming the sword. <laughs> and like I said, when you're low on health and you break a chest, there's a good chance that food will spawn, which is why I don't break this chest quite yet. I just wait until like until I run out of health if that even happens. So this is the final boss, the Cyclops. And he has three main attacks. Two main attacks actually. The first one is spinning skeletons and the second one is uh, throwing down those big boulders we saw earlier in the oval. And skeletons are annoying, you want to get, in, get them out of your hair as fast as possible so you can damage the boss. And when you hit him on the chin like this, he doesn't actually take any damage. But every 10 hits, he like gets knocked down and you can damage him that way. So you jump and you swing your sword. And if you time it right, you can get 2 swings per jump. And I don't know if a 2 cycle fight is possible, the best I ever got what, 3 cycles? I think it was in this run too. But anyways. You can hope for a 3 cycle fight if you're fast enough. So the this attack knocks you down, but I don't think it actually deals that much damage, so don't worry about it too much. The rocks, however, do deal damage, so yeah. Oh, and also, if you go too far to the upper left of the screen, I don't think I can show it in this run, but sometimes the Cyclops will grab you with his fist throwing on the ground and it deals a lot of damage, so it's something you really, really want to avoid. And it, it's quite easy to avoid because you don't really need to go to the upper left of the screen very often, but you know, good to know nonetheless. And this current run is pretty much about to be over.
and there we go. So that is how I speedrun double-edged. Thanks for watching.